Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are looking at our playlist on the 2024 external exams in Queensland by focusing on paper one on short answer questions for general maths and we are looking at three questions on finance. Now before we get into that I just want to let you know how you can engage further with me here at McClutchy Maths. Firstly, you could like and subscribe to the channel. You could tell someone about this or even share it on your class OneNote or even consider telling us in the comments. We always love to hear your feedback. And lastly, if you want to keep the channel going, you want to be able to contribute to the cost of running the channel, um, of which there are quite a few, then you could donate $2 on your secure PayPal account by hitting that little love heart button. It's called Super Thanks and we would really appreciate your support. Okay, let's get into our first of the three questions. It's question 18 and it's worth four marks. Um, when a child is born, their parent deposits $3,000 to open an investment account earning interest at 4.2% per annum, compounding monthly. If there are no further transactions and the interest rate does not change, calculate the amount of interest earned by the child's 18th birthday. So we've got a lot going on in this particular question. And so we need to read this really carefully and see if we can unpack what kind of formula we're going to need from our formula sheet. So here's our first set of clues. No further transactions. That means we're putting in $3,000 one time and we're leaving it there for 18 years. So because there's no additional payments going into that particular investment, it's not an annuity. So that means we can rule out all of the annuity formulas. And I'm sure quite a few of you are probably breathing a sigh of relief on that one, which means it's just a straight up compound interest question. So this here it is, it says compounding. So we've got to also determine is it simple interest or compound interest? Well, it's compounding, so we need to use the right formula, which is this formula here from our formula sheet, A equals P brackets, one plus I to the power of N. Now, what I've done here is I've stated my variables. This is always a good place to do that. You should always write your formula first, and then you've got P, you've got I, you've got N, and A, you want to define what they are. Well, P is our principal. That's the amount we start with. The parents deposited $3,000. Now, it's compounded monthly, which means we need to convert the yearly rate as a decimal, so we're going to be dividing 4.2 by 100 to get 0.042. We want to divide that by 12 because that will give us a monthly rate, whereas this is an annual rate. So we need a monthly rate to be able to calculate this properly, which is 0.0035. The next thing we need to do is calculate the number of compounding periods. Now we've got 18 years, but because it compounds monthly and there's 12 months in a year, the total number of compounding periods will be 216. Okay, now that we have stated our variables, we've correctly determined the values for I and for N and we get our first of the four marks. Our next step is to substitute into the formula. So we're taking these letters, we're putting them and replacing these letters in the formula with the correct numbers. We get our second mark for substituting into an appropriate rule, which is the compound interest rule. Now let's say I did I and I did N, I've got that correct and I've substituted that into an annuity formula by not reading the question properly. That means I would get the first mark, but not the second mark. And also in reverse, let's say I have um, not calculated I and N correctly. I've just used 0.042 and I've just used 18 for my value for N, but I've put it into the correct formula, then I'll get one of the four marks there for that. Okay, so all is not lost if you make a couple of mistakes or one mistake, um, but ideally you wanna be getting this done correctly. Okay, our next step is to work that out on our calculator. And we get that amount at the end is $6,380.79. That's what our compound interest formula has worked out. So we need to read the question and see if that's what the question is asking us to do or if it's asking us to round it to a certain amount. Well, if you read it here, it says calculate the amount of interest. This is not the amount of interest. This is the amount of the end, which includes the original deposit. The difference between these two um, is the interest. So principal plus the interest gives us the amount at the end. So I need to now take that away from the amount at the end. And because I've worked this amount, I'm gonna get the third of the four marks, but I need to finish that off properly by looking at that amount of interest. So the interest would be the amount at the end, take away the amount at the beginning, and the difference is the interest, which is going to be $3,390.79. Don't forget your dollar sign. Um, in the past, with the QCAA, um, sometimes in the past, the marking schemes have not awarded the mark if there is no dollar sign. Also remembering that money has two decimal places, so you need to round correctly to the um, decimal place there. And we get our fourth mark for getting that final answer. Okay, question 21. A perpetuity earns interest quarterly at 5.2% per annum 
and pays $975 each quarter. First of all, we need to work out that quarterly interest rate. So this is the annual interest rate. This is what PA stands for per annum. So per year, we're getting 5.2%, but per quarter, and there's four quarters in one year, so we need to divide that by four, and we'll get a quarterly rate of 0 0.013, which is 1.3% per annum. So I could have written 0 0.013 or 1.3%, and that will get me my first of three marks. Part B, calculate the value of the perpetuity, and this is worth two marks. So if you're joining us from 2019 syllabus, then you won't get a perpetuity formula on your formula sheet. However, if you are joining us from the 2025 syllabus, you get a formula, which is fantastic. So those of you who are doing the exam in 2024, you would have had to memorize the formula. And this is what the formula looks like. Some textbooks use different letters um, for the formula. So A is the amount of the perpetuity, M is the amount of the payment per period, and I is the interest rate per period. So we've got 975 from our question, We've just worked out the interest rate from here. So now I've got my formula, I've got my variables. Let's substitute those in. And I'm gonna work out that the perpetuity's value is $75,000. And that's a logical answer. Because if you remember, the perpetuity, I need to invest enough to be getting this much money every quarter at a fairly ordinary interest rate. It's the interest rate that's currently paying in 2025. So 75,000 seems like a reasonable amount of money. Now, if I'd simply, used 1.3% and I divided that um, by 1.3, I'm gonna end up with a very low amount of money. How on earth would a small amount of money be paying me $975 a quarter? It couldn't. So you need to think the logic through of your answers. Once again, presenting that with a dollar sign. We get our second mark for appropriately substituting that into the right formula and then for working out the value of the perpetuity from the variables that we worked out up here. So if I made a mistake at this at level A, then if I carried that through correctly, I'm not going to be penalised in part B. Okay, question 22, worth six marks. This one is a doozy. Okay, so stay with me on this one. First part A is worth two marks. For a reducing balance loan of $15,000, it has an interest rate of 8.4% per annum calculated monthly with a $250 repayment at the end of every month. And we need to use the monthly interest rate, so we've got a yearly rate here, we need to change that to a monthly rate and use that to write a recurrence relation for the loan balance after n number of months. Now, this looks yucky and wordy, but it's straight off your formula sheet. So first of all, let's change this to a monthly interest rate. 0 0.084, which is 8.4 divided by 100, divided by 12 to get a monthly rate, and our monthly rate is 0 0.007. And we've correctly calculated that we get our first of the two marks. Now we need to write that recurrence relation. And here's my formula straight off the formula sheet for a reducing balance loan. AN plus one equals RAN take away R. Now this variable up here is the letter I. You would recall that little r um, is the rate and it's equal to one plus the interest rate. So we need to add those two together and we'll get 1.007. Now I need to leave the AN plus one and the AN for it to technically be a recurrence relation. If I go and substitute the $15,000 in here, it will not be a recurrence relation. So be very careful that you're not replacing these values yet. Capital R is this $250 repayment, so it'll be take away 250, and our amount at time zero is 15,000. Now I have a full recurrence relation and I get my second mark. We're on to part B. Now we need to use this recurrence relation that we just created to calculate the loan balance after two months. So we're gonna be substituting in to find the amount at time one and then the amount at time two. So at time one, I've got 1.007 times the amount invested, $15,000, take away 250 and I'll get the amount after one month um, of the loan balance is $14,855. Now I just need to repeat that process by now substituting this into the formula where it says AN. So A2 will be 1.007 times the amount of the loan, take away $250 the repayment, and my balance after two months is $14,708.99. It's a lot of work for one mark, but worth doing. So now I've got a loan balance after two months. Now this is where the question is going to get complicated, part C. I need to use the reduction in the loan balance and the total repayments to determine the amount of interest paid in the first two months. This is worth three marks. 
Now, if you go to the QCAA's website, they have two different solutions for this question. So there are different ways to get to the same result. What's really important is that you're communicating very clearly because this is worth three marks and there are some complicated steps in here. So the first part is they've actually given us a clue about how to solve the problem. We need to work at the reduction in the loan balance. So you recall, if we go back to our previous slide, the loan balance after two months is $14,708.99. It's reduced from $15,000. So if we find the difference between those two amounts, we're going to get the reduction in the loan balance. And it's $291.01. Okay, so that's where we've ended up after two months. We have reduced that loan's value by $291. Okay, the next thing it wants us to work out is the total repayments. So we've got our first mark of three. Our total repayments, we've paid in the first month $250, in the second month $250. So 250 times two gives me $500. So I've worked out this part here as well, and I've got my second of three marks. Now the question is, well, what do I do with that information? Well, when we pay back part of a loan with a repayment, that repayment is made up of principal and it's made up of interest. Okay, so it's not all principal that we're paying off. We're not just paying off the 15,000, we've got to pay the 15,000 and the interest back. So the difference between what we've reduced the loan balance by and what we've paid physically out of our account is made up of the interest itself. So our actual, what we owe has come down by $291, but the difference there is the interest. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is 500 take away $291, I get $208.99. Once again, I need to present that with the dollar sign and remember that money is rounded to two decimal places. So my rounding needed to be correct. That was on the marking scheme. It needed to be correctly rounded either to the nearest cent, which would be to 99, to the nearest five cents, which would be $209, or to the nearest whole number amount. So the QCAA did give you some leeway to round in different ways. The important thing here is that you do it one of those ways correctly. Well, if you found this video helpful today, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com if you've got any questions whatsoever. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. Join me for the upcoming videos and have a wonderful day.